Faith sees what could be, not what it is. Faith sees invisible, the dream, the goal, the future. Well, changes and different makers lives on, on God promises, not his, not our compromises. Live by faith, not by, by by sight. It means that we live on faith, not our feelings. No matter how you feel, God's God's faith always trumps that. Success takes passion. You don't have it. Lily, you know, Lily is very contagious. Her joy is contagious, right? You know, outwardly, man, you will, he's hanging around my wife. I tell you what, she will squeeze all the negatives out of you. Hmm, I can't do that. My liver burns out if I act like Lydia. You know what I mean? Right? Sometimes your passion is quiet. That's the inner confidence. You look at them and you say, you know what? They know, they know. God is passionate about us. We have to be passionate about God. Amen. Amen. People have to see us more than conquerors to Christ Jesus. Stop wimping away. Start being winners in Christ. Don't whine. Nah, nah. Oh man, I've been there. I tell you what. How come God? Da, da, da. God says, just trust me. I still sometimes whine. I mean, God, my car broke again. How come? There is a leak in my ceiling. How come? I don't have time. Da, da, da. And you talk about all of that. So that's important. Sometimes you have to stretch your faith until it hurts. Anybody been there? Give. Oh, I don't want to. Serve. I don't want to. Come to church. I don't want to. And we, you know what? We rob God from blessing us when we are disobedient. There's many praying that God will bless them. And God says, why should I bless you? You don't even do what I tell you to do. Galatians 6, 9 says, do not get tired of doing good. Okay? Doing what is right. At just the right time, you will reap a harvest. Okay? If you don't give up. Keep doing what God has told you to do. Eventually, God will bless you. The most important H is heaven's help. <coughs> True success comes with a, with a condition. Always include God. Psalms 127 1 says, Unless the Lord builds a house, a business, your finances, your marriage, your family, whatever it is, the work of the builders is wasted. God has to be first in your life. If something else is, I pray that you remove it. 1 Timothy 6.10 warns people who love money above God. Okay? The love of money, the love of what it values, what it can buy you, you know. Some people have walked away from, from the relationship with God, and God says, don't do that because you're going to harm yourself. Only with me things will be perfectly successful. With, without me, you're, you're dead me. Think of people that you know. I pray for people that I know, people in our church, people that I've known before that has walked away from God. They have better things to do. God will have His way. So it's a warning, God says. I love you unconditionally. Would you love me back? You know what? We know if God is in first place. By the decisions that we make. You know what's more important than that? God knows too. If He is in first place. So number three. God answers are worth waiting for. Just think, if I got ahead of God and decided to do it my way, I would, you know, I'd be, I'd be in debt going to the Philippines. I told, you know, I told God, I don't want, I don't want to be in debt. I know a lot of people think God is saying something. Then you want, they spend money they don't have, or, or spend money that, that was meant for something else and get in debt. And they say, why God? Why? Because God says, He let me out of it. You thought it was me, but it wasn't. It wasn't emotions. Waiting for God to answer is always good news, but not the easy news, especially when we have a deadline to meet. <coughs> Anybody feel a pressure like that? You gotta pay your rent, you gotta, you gotta pay for credit cards, you gotta believe, and there's so much pressure involved, okay? The Bible tells us that God is always faithful to His Word. He never fails, and He will never will. Never will. Blessings can be delayed, but never denied, unless you don't deserve them. 
Been there too. When God said no, I, I said yes and got myself in trouble. I remember trying to buy, I shared this before, trying to buy a new van because ours was just not working well. A four cylinder van, it was working on three cylinders, you know what I mean? So I saw a van that had my name on it for sale. And I went to bought it and guess what happened? It died a week later. And it became a monument to my stupidity. I parked it in my front yard and became my storage. I look every time I look at it, you dummy. <laughs> so I don't don't get ahead of God. Okay, our flesh wants immediate gratification. God says no. There are times that God will answer our prayers, and sometimes we're not aware of it. Okay? Now, God took everything from us, from me per particularly. I had everything. I live, you know, the, the, the Kalama Valley, five bedroom home, sudden lame, everything, right? Money in my pocket, first class travel, attention, la 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 la, right? And God asked me, what is my relationship with you, Nando? I said, who are you? You know one of those? And God goes, I'm going to take everything away from you. I says, what do you mean? I work hard for my money. <laughs> You're blessing me, right? And I didn't know. He says, no, the money is your God, not me. And he was true to his word. He took everything from me. Okay? And I looked at that. Um, remember this. When God closes a door, don't try to kick it open. And when God opens a door, walk through it. Though it may be may seem manini at first, okay? It can develop into something that is that will blow your mind. Okay? Do what God puts in front of you. That one talent up that one talent thing can turn into five and twenty talents down the line. If you're faithful with a little, you'll be faithful with a lot. Anyway, God had to take everything to get my full attention. I was distracted by all these things of the world, but God had a bigger plan for me. Thank you, Jesus. It was one of those sink or swim situations because we didn't have any money. Okay, I was a little older, who I was too educated, too much experience, and nobody wanted to hire me. You know what I mean? Right? So we started a cleaning business because we had to eat. <laughs> okay, we ate whatever we could, whatever we could afford. We lived in a van for a year and a half because we couldn't afford anything. Then the business grew from one customer into working with real estate companies and businesses. And by the time that I, I shut down my business, I had a big clientele. Okay? But God, in the midst of all of that, God called me into ministry. Oh, here we go. I'm broke again. <laughs> right? I looked at that guy and says, oh, Lord, what is it? He says, I'm going to use you for something. I'm going to use you for something big. But you'd be faithful with one, one town. So we did. From... The van we moved into apartment from apartment came into a rented home and from a rented home came okay, now we own our own home we bought the place okay the, the the sellers reduced the price so we could afford it with no money down isn't it nuts illogical okay but god did it and i took a look at that and i says you know what it had to be god my customers okay became our good friends and when, when I shut down the business, I didn't recommend anybody to anybody because of my reputation that, that I built. Some people say that, you know, um, by their measure, um, we're not successful, money. But in God's eyes, we are. We measure our success by God's approval and His grace, not by the things that we own. Everything we have is going to burn anyway. It's, everything is His. Focusing on Jesus. The world standards, we are far from being rich. But when I'm, I am poor, He is rich. And He will supply all of our needs according to His riches and glories, not ours. Redeem. God redeems our sins for His glory. All the things that I look in my past and say, thank you, Jesus. He used them to prepare me for a much higher calling. Was it easy? Absolutely not. Was it worth it? Yes, it was. Okay? And he's not through with me yet. I press on. It's not about my age. It's about my passion for Christ and to do his will. It's about delayed gratification. It's about being, okay, making wiser choices. On our human side, okay, we want things now. We want things immediately. But God sometimes says, not yet. I'm still working it out. Or I have a better plan for you. Or what you're asking for. Don't vote it. 
Isaiah 43, 19 says, Behold, I'm doing a new thing now. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Praise God, man. God is doing something new in you. You're a new creation in Christ. Your latter days are going to be better than your former days. We have a future and a hope waiting for you if you do it His way. Stop fighting it. Stop cooperating with Him. He said, I will do a new thing. Why is it doing a new thing? It seems that uh, we might know the minor things, yeah? On the now. Instead of the instead of eternal things. Scripture tells us don't despise small beginnings. Be faithful to it. But maybe God is just testing your faith. I want to close today's message with, with a thought. I think you have to really close it. Say, I had to think about it. <coughs> I remember I was writing something and you know when, when God is with you, time seems to fly away. Okay? This morning I went about 3 o'clock, I just started to write something and looked up at 6 o'clock already. God was speaking to me and my, I tell you what, He was revealing something to me. This is why when I sang this song this morning, then I realized God, you really love me, yeah. He says, yes, now, but because you follow me and you hear my voice. Some of you are in a desert right now. That's a good place to be. Those desert times when you don't have any resources, when you call out to Jesus. You can burn in a desert or see it. The desert is blessings in disguise. Matthew 4, 1 and 2 says that Jesus was led in by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Why? He wants to see how resilient we are, how trusting we are. Okay? Desert times are good times. It reveals your character or the lack of it. And that's important that you understand that God will use. Okay? Jesus was tempted as a man, not as God. He had all the limitations of a human being. He had to fully depend on the Holy Spirit's guidance and his, and his power. Okay? He needed to really say, God, I surrender to you. How did he make it? He knew the Word of God. He could first, and he used the Word of God. He knew and used the Word of God against the devil. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit, and he spoke to the Father daily through prayer. If Jesus did the same, Maybe it's a model for us to do the same also. How many of us are really getting into the Word of God? That's where the power is. That's where, you know, you will have a test in life. But it's an open book test, you know what I mean? You have all of the answers inside of the book of life. And that's important that you do that. Life is filled from crisis to crisis, from glory to glory. You will have more tests in life than, than triumphs in life, it seems. Why? I don't know. What's going to happen on the other side of heaven? I don't know, but I'm excited. If God is intentional, He has made you to do certain things so He can use you for His glory in the future. Isn't it? So He's preparing you as He did with me. He has access to And He said, you know what? We will do what Jesus did on earth. Why? Because when we accept our salvation, the Holy Spirit... The authority and the power is transferred into us. The potential to overcome everything that faces us right now is living inside of each and every one of you. It's called God's grace and His faith. The more you know it, the more you use it, the stronger it gets, and you'll be more than conquerors to Christ Jesus, who supplies all of your needs. Simple and powerful. Thanks living is a culture that changes from inside out. Be transformed by the way that you think. Some of us need brain surgery, right? When we are fully committed to live in a higher authority and standards, God will pour out His blessings. His storehouses will be open. That our, okay, our bank accounts will not be able to contain that. Can you imagine that? Our love will not be able to contain that. Our grace would not be able to contain what God has given us. It will over, people will take a look at you and say, you know what? You know you know, yeah? Why? By the way that you live your life. 
when things go nuts and you're at peace, you can say, hey, there's something about you. Yeah, Krishna. Wow, something different about you. Yeah, I'm a new creature in Christ. All things are past. So where are you today? Do you feel like you're in the desert? Embrace it, but don't, don't build your house there. <laughs> Cross over to the river, to the promised land. It is important. God says, come. Come, all who burden. Come, who are we? Come, and I will give you rest. Anybody needs God rest, especially this Thanksgiving. You need to rest in When you rest, okay? When you rest, what happens is that your confidence increases. Some of you just need to take a nap. Can you hear amen? The most spiritual thing you can do is just take a nap and take a Sabbath from your worry. Anybody? Go home, take a nap. There's something about taking a nap when you wake up, you feel refreshed, right? Can be a 10 minute nap. Right? Some of you take a nap in church. Oh, maybe you're fresh, right? I remember watching one guy one time. <laughs> because from here I can see everything, right? He's over there. I don't know. He's like this. Oh, he's having a spiritual, a spiritual uh, uh, encounter. Until I saw the saliva come through. His head. And he hit his head, right? Oh, I'm cracking up. I said, God, you can speak to me in sleep, right? <laughs> I'm cracking up over there. Right? Why? I did that before, too. Right? <laughs> and there would, or some people, oh, yeah, I'm reading my Bible. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, watching wrong, something wrong inside of that, right? So whatever it is, you know, I'm not here to judge you. It's really important because, you know, busted. I've been, I've been the same, too. But God has redeemed that because, you know what? He loves us. He loves us. Whatever it is, okay? Sometimes we just got to take a thorough invitation of ourselves, okay? Um, you can lie to people, but you cannot lie to yourself, right? You know, wherever you are, you are. You cannot run away from yourself, right? So God, look at that. You know, if we're true with God, if we really appreciate God, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter should be an everyday event. Every day, right? You wake up optimistic. Man, here you go, Lord. I cannot do anything but yesterday, but I am 84,400 seconds today. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice no matter what. Broken car, that's again to rejoice. Oh, okay, my ceiling, I'm going to rejoice anyway. Why? God is near. And God is for you. We are full-time Christians. We have no limits. We limit God from blessing us by the way that we live. Well, by the way that we live. And if we decide to disobey Him, and it will rob Him from the opportunity of blessing you the way He wants. It grieves Him when we disobey Him. And God says, don't, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. It grieves Him when we don't take Him seriously. We treat Him as a genie, not as Almighty God. God deserves all of our thanks, all of our praise and glory and worship, all of our hearts, all of our passion every day. We live a grateful life simply because we're grateful. Our obedience will say, God, thank you for you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just come before you. We just thank you for you. As simple as that. We thank you for being God. Jesus, we thank you for dying for us because you loved us so much that you saved us from going away from God instead of to God. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for using us, Father. Lord, give us a passion to reach for the lost, especially in this time of year when people are more receptive to hear the word of God and invitation to come into your presence. Give us that passion. Holy Spirit, we need your help. We cannot do anything without you, your authority, your guidance, and your power. Help us to surrender to you completely. For those who are running away, Father, let your love chase them down. Speak to their hearts, Father. Your greatest desire is not shall perish. You said you are patient with us. It's because you want everyone to repent, change of their sinful ways, and to come to Christ. Lord, I thank you for making a way for me to be obedient to you. 
you've asked me to do the impossible. Well, what I thought was impossible. But with you, all things are possible. Continue to change my heart, Father. So I can hear you, I can see you, and I can obey you. And I pray this for you, this church, Father, this sanctuary whereby every life matters. May we go into, into the peace of the Lord. This is the day you've made for us. We will, we will rejoice and be glad of it. Lord, let you reign in our lives. Every nook and cranny in our lives, please reign in your lives, Father. In our stillness, Father, in a few minutes, Holy Spirit, please speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ.